Hi everyone, and thanks for joining me for the second episode of the Big Sucks Project. Today, we will be focusing on a very important topic, dynamics. In order to master our control of different dynamics, I put together a series of exercises that I use every day. I find these exercises super helpful for developing the quality of our sound and the control and stability of the embouchure. Therefore, I highly recommend these if you want to nail dynamic control. Some tips to keep in mind. It's important for me to point out something. We practice a lot in order to develop our technique. Yet, sometimes we forget that the instrument and setup we are using might not be ideal for us. It is crucial to find a setup that you feel comfortable with. Always make sure that your teacher checks if your instrument is in good condition, that your mouthpiece fits your level and needs, and also that it's not too old. Old mouthpieces tend to become harder to play on, and sometimes you might have the impression that something is stuck or blocked. Be sure that the reeds you are using match your abilities and needs. Reeds that are too hard will make it difficult for you to produce sound, reeds that are too soft will do the opposite and won't have enough resistance, and by that they will limit your dynamic range, sound quality, and the ability to support the air properly. Choose reeds that are somewhere in between. As you become more experienced, pay attention to gradually choose stronger reeds, since your embouchure's muscles are now more fit and therefore need more resistance from the reed. Along with that, keep in mind that a good quality strap is essential for healthy and correct posture. I highly recommend my setup, which is Selmer Series 2 Super Action Alto Sax with the Selmer Concept mouthpiece, Dadario 3 Plus Reeds, and the BG France Ligature. This combination gives a rich and clear sound, fast reaction, and great stability. As for the strap, I've been using the Japanese breathtaking strap for the past 7 years, highly recommended as well. So, let's start. As wind players, I believe we need to find the connecting link between our breath and the sound that we produce on our sax. Therefore, I'd like to start with the breath. Simply breathe calmly into the instrument while keeping your eyes closed. The mouthpiece should be in your mouth, but don't use any muscle pressure to close your mouth around it. Just inhale and exhale gently. Do it several times until you can feel how natural and calming it is. The best image I've found for the connection between the breath and the embouchure comes from stringed instruments. When I produce a sound, I imagine that I'm holding a bow. The string is my supported air stream and the bow is the amount of pressure that I need to have on the mouthpiece in order for the sound to appear. Here's a cool exercise to work on that. You can also do it as a daily meditation practice. Choose a note that is comfortable for you to play. Sit or stand with your eyes closed and focused on this image of the bow. Observe your body. Exhale and gradually add more pressure of the embouchure. At this point, you might start hearing a pitch sound mixed with air. That's great! Continue to gradually and gently add lip pressure while sustaining your airflow until you have a clear sound, ideally with no air sound at all. Here are some examples.
It's important that you take your time and don't rush. True control comes from a long process of getting to know your body and how it functions. In a way, our body is the instrument, not less than the sex. We need to keep it in shape and flexible. But that's for another video. If you still don't have a completely clear and clean sound, it's totally fine. As we said, it's a process. If you practice it every day, you'll be there in no time. The next step would be to start exploring this exercise in different registers of the instrument. At this point, we are still not using a metronome and not defining any specific dynamics. Simply try to fade in and out on different notes and get to know your limits. When do you need to use more pressure and where less? Can you achieve the same result by using less pressure? Take your time to explore. Here's an example. Now it's time to take our metronome. We'll work in the same way, taking our time, focusing on the process and not on the result. As we mentioned in the previous video, we can create a chart with the different dynamics. For now, let's use pianissimo to falta, number of beats. In the example that will follow, I will use two, four and eight beat sequences and range, high, middle, and low pitched notes. Here are a few examples.
As you probably noticed, this exercise can be practiced both with tongue attack at the beginning of the note or without. Try both. Now, the goal of all this work is to incorporate this ability into our playing and develop our musical interpretation. So let's try to incorporate it into La Cour's Etude number one that we practiced together last week. First, I'll take the first two notes and stretch them over eight beats each, going from piano to forte and then back to piano. For the third and fourth notes, I'll reverse the exercise. I'll still have eight beats for each note, only that now I'll start with forte, with a diminuendo to piano, and crescendo back to forte. Let's do the same for the first eight bars. Four bars crescendo and four bars diminuendo. This might sound not very logical for the musical phrase, but it's only an exercise. Now, let's divide the phrase into four and four. We'll use the crescendo diminuendo effect in both sections. Do you feel how this effect makes the music much more expressive and intense? In this way, we can control the intensity of the different parts of a musical sentence. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more interesting music videos. Check out this recent recording of Iber's Concertino da Camera. I will see you in the next episode of the Big Sax Project. Ciao! Thank you.